I mean, there's always a risk of uh, recording an introduction like this in the infinity pool because we create the impression that uh, this is what we've been doing for the last uh, seven days in Vishikapatna. I mean, that's not the case at all. We're getting up at 6.30 in the morning, fighting the traffic on the way to the ground, taking an hour and a half, being delivered to the wrong hotel uh, <laughs> after trying conditions at the ground. But it's nice to know that uh, this facility exists for next time we come yes for the next time we come definitely we'll be back in the uh, the freezing cold one one a.m was it goffey saying one a.m alarm calls in the freezing cold back in england but no the one good thing about this england team it always gives you a day off um whether they're winning <laughs> or they're losing so to spend it in the afternoon by the in the infinity in infinity pool um, it, it's a ni nice welcome way to finish the tour. It's not the kind of uh, view behind us that you associate with an infinity pool. There's no palm trees, no uh, golden beaches at our hotel. We are close to the airport though, which is handy because we're flying to Delhi this evening. Um, the, the, the rest and recuperation, we'll hear from uh, Brendan McCullum in just a moment, is a big thing, isn't it, for the, for the Stokes McCullum? The, they, it sounds like they're going to be spending quite a lot more time in the swimming pool between test matches than we are. Yeah, it sounds like it. Um, it looks like they're going for a, a little bit of rest, and I don't blame them. You know, from a, a boots up point of view, they're going to you know, recharge the batteries. I think it's been a tough couple of weeks, physically. Um, so the worry that is if they have to call on somebody that hasn't played in the game I'm sure they're doing you know, the, the relevant um, physical work to just in case they're ready for, for Rajkot but no it's about um, the environment it's about making sure that people are, are, are ready for the next, you know, next set of challenges and I think what it, what it is is the family time is important for Ben Stokes all the families are coming across and I think it's time to get away from the Goldfish Bowl of India, have some time with, them, with their families to themselves and then come back, batteries recharged. And I didn't have a problem with this trip to Abu Dhabi. I just struggled to comprehend the first trip to Abu Dhabi with the young spin bowlers. But that has, uh, that's been blown out of the water, pardon the pun. It has, uh, <laughs> they, they've, they've done really, really well so far. So I'm so proud of the way they've played. They're going to Raj got 1-1 and hopefully by the time they get there, um, the batteries will be charged and they'll be ready to go. All right, well, uh, let's hear now from Brendan McCullum. He spoke to Andrew McKenna after the test match and uh, we'll get out of here and get dried off in the meantime. Brendan, it wasn't to be in the end, but yet again, I imagine England take so many positives out of this because that's all you guys ever see. <laughs> yeah, look, absolutely. It's been a, a fantastic week. Obviously, last week was amazing to, to get across the line and to get that win. Um, this week, whilst we're on the other side of it, we've still... You know, I had a fantastic week here in Vizag. The, the ground has been amazing. The, the place itself has been fantastic. The crowds turned up and really supported the throughout the week. And you know, two two good teams went at it and were separated by pretty small margins. But you now we sit here one-one in the series now, and there's a little break. Both teams will get the opportunity to regroup and, and work out um, ways that we we come back strong in the next one. Bound to be some sore bodies, and I guess my first question has got to be Joe Root because obviously spent a lot of time off the field, did come out and bat. How is that finger? Yeah, his finger's actually better than what we thought. Um, yesterday we were a little bit worried about it, but he sort of bounced back and, um, and I think we're pretty confident with it. Actually, a couple of the boys were, were quite ill today, um, which, um, you know, they fought their way through, which uh, which is a great sign of the character that they possess. And, you know, Folksy and, and uh, Tommy Hartley and, and Ollie Pope in particular were were very ill today, but they, they wanted to get out there and, and take the game on and, um, you know, credit to the character that they've got. But, look, our guys are are really good and um, they're in good spirits um, you wouldn't really know that we've gone down in that dressing room because there's so many po positives that you can take out of it none none more so than um, you know our young spin uh, trio who, who really stepped up particularly in Joe's absence and alongside um, the, the ever ever present uh, Jimmy Anderson um, were able to bowl India out in that third innings for 250 in, in these conditions so there's so many positives I thought Zach Crawley's batting was another a uh, real positive, the way that some of the guys adapted and, and, and tried to play throughout the innings and what was a run chase is something we will always try and take on. Um, we won't always achieve it, but we'll always try and take it on. And you know, We fell short, but we walk away from the week content that we, we threw a few punches and, and uh, you know, we were outplayed in a, by a couple of guys who played some super knocks. I think Jaswal and, and Shubman Gill um, were, were fantastic with bat in hand and obviously the way Boomer bowled too. So, Small margins separate the two teams, but that's what you want in a big contest like this. You picked the players to come here, so you obviously believe in them to start with, but is it then nice to see Hartley, Bashir, go out and play the way they have, as if so that you can then turn around to the rest of the world and go, that's why they're here, that's, we, we knew they could do that. 
Yeah, look, we'd never turn around in the rest of the world and say that, but from our point of view, we pick guys who we think have got skill sets which will be um, effective in the conditions that we come up against. And yes, there's always going to be a bit of a gamble with that stuff because they haven't got necessarily proven track records, but you can identify the skill set and then you also identify the character. And what we've learned from from uh, from those guys throughout this week and also last week is they've got an immense amount of character and, and they've got a huge amount of passion and sometimes youth is is such a, a great th- great thing because there is no scars they come in and they see blue sky and, and they want to they want to try and do things right in the game so look, we're really delighted with how those those three have, have performed so far in the series and we'll just keep trying to give them confidence because we don't know where their ceiling is two very intense games of cricket you've now got a break before um, Rajkot has the break come at the right time and you are going to now head back to Abu Dhabi how much cricket will there be in Abu Dhabi and you know what's the if you like the relationship between rest and work yeah I was speaking to Rahul Dravid this morning the Indian coach and I sort of asked him what he was up to after his test match he said we're all going to uh, head home and, and have a bit of a break and for, for us you know home's a long way away so we're going to head to Abu Dhabi all the families are coming out there as well which logistically is just a lot easier and we look forward to spending some time with them and and just, I guess, digesting the last couple of weeks has been, as, as you say, um, quite intense and, and also quite consuming. So it's an opportunity for us all to take a little bit of stock on both sides, us and also India. And, and then, you know, we'll come back and, and put, put the graft in when we get to Rajkot. Uh, there won't be a whole lot of cricket stuff and well, there probably won't be any cricket stuff, to be honest, in Abu Dhabi, just as there won't be much for the Indian boys as well. Um, we've got a lot of preparation under our belts. It's been a long time in Abu Dhabi leading into this series. We've trained a lot and we've had two intense test matches. So for us, it's more the mental side of the game that you want to refresh the guys and, and make sure we come back and we we uh, we put our best foot forward in that next, next test match, as I'm sure India will look to try and do. There is a possibility that Virat Kohli comes back for them. You obviously were expecting him for the first test of the series. How much of that does that change their squad, if he does? Well, obviously, Virat's one of the, one of the greatest players the game's seen, so no doubt it improves their squad. Um, but we've said all the way along that the depth in India, the talent in India, um, you know, they've got they've got it in, in spades. So uh, we respect every opposition player that we come up against. If Virat is uh, coming back, and we hope everything's well with with him and his family as well, um, then we'll look forward to that challenge too. He's a great competitor. I know him very well. Um, I enjoy playing against him. I enjoy our team playing against him. Um, and you know, if you have success against the best, then you know you've earned it. That was Brendan McCullum speaking to uh, Maka, Andrew McKenna, after the Test match. Harmy, uh, he's called head coach, but that's not really his role, is it? I mean, he's more of a, a facilitator, a mentor. He, he creates great environments, and he's super, super optimistic. You'd struggle to, to be down, wouldn't you, around him? Yeah, you would. I think what he does is he creates scenarios in the players' minds and tries to put them in game situation more than any technical coaching I think the coaching side of it and I've always said if you need technical coaching in international cricket well you know the selectors have picked the wrong person (laughs) so yeah I think the creating environment is important I think his experience of international cricket his experience of leadership his experience of, uh, of, of what he's done around the world stands him in good steads of being a good man manager, talking to players on an individual basis, putting them in scenarios, asking them questions to think about different things that p- potentially crop up during the day, um, and then hopefully putting enough uh, information or helping the, the players' information in their mind to go and play as freely as, and openly and expansively as they possibly can with their skill set. So. I think he's. I think he's more. I think you're right. More mentor than than the old-fashioned coach. Um, but I think that's more important in international cricket than it is in first-class cricket. I'm not sure he'd get away with it in first-class cricket. And I think, and that's not. He probably would because he'd, he'd adapt to it. But I think because of the way he is as a person, I think he's much more suited to deal with the elite. Yeah, you know, we've had Kevin Peterson all week in the last two weeks and. When Peter Moores and Kevin Peterson had their, had their, went to loggerhead out here all them years ago, it was exactly that. It was Peter was more of a, a technical coach, a hard working coach, and you have to, you know, net and net and net, and you know, you go through, you know, from a, a technique point of view, where Kevin was of the opinion, like McCullum, no, you know, let's play freely. Let you know these players express themselves rather than be try to be handheld. So, I think that's what McCullum's 
great a strength is and I think it's so much more suited for international cricket more than it is for you know, the domestic level where some players probably do need technically coaching I'm, probably, I'm sure he can probably do that as well but I think this is a better environment for Brendan McCollum. The change of mindset though from previous tours and previous decades is really profound and, and there'll be some people I'm sure who struggle to get their heads around it there'll be some former players um, you know what it's like to go and play a three-day game between test matches against under a Pradesh second 11 um, in a small outground um, and it, it's hot and dusty and, and really all, <laughs> you're exhausted already from the first test and there'll be, but there'll be lots of people are saying well it, it's their job their job is to play cricket uh, for England and, and you know and they should be practicing and training and 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 they're going to Abu Dhabi. I mean, this whole idea of momentum um, is there's no effort to try. In fact, not only is there no effort to to maintain the momentum, it's like actively cut it off. Get out of the country, go to Abu Dhabi, um, and as Brandon said, there's not going to be much cricket there. Uh, the families will be there. They're going on holiday. Yeah, they're going on holder. Um, they'll be, I think they'll be relevant cricket for the ones that need cricket. If, I, if you mention me about going back to my playing days, I probably couldn't, I could go to Abu Dhabi, but I would have to have at least probably two, two or three bowling sessions between second and third test match. Yeah. I wouldn't want to play it in warm games. I'm, I've been consistent. I know I was critical before they came out, but that was a separate, a separate way of talking about young bowlers coming over here and not understanding what it's like to bowl lines and lengths in India because I've never bowled here before um, but this bit I don't I've never ever had a problem with the, the, this bit I think there'll be one or two will go right I need to bowl this morning and go and bowl you know Brendan McCullum has you know the most of their sessions are optional sessions yeah. but the majority of the time they all turn up you know you, you speak to, to the senior players you know when they say it's an optional session, but we, we, we went down a couple of times for optional sessions. Everybody was there, everybody was working hard. I think it's just a, it's just a way of creating that environment of um, a relaxed manner where it's your career, you know what you need to get prepared for Raj Cup, so I'll help you. And I think that, for me, is what the coaching staff is, is all about. So Jimmy Anderson might think, I might need to bowl middle of the, next, middle of the week, so I'm sure he'll take the relevant parties to go off and, and have a bowl and then that'll be him done go back to family and get away from what the goldfish bowl of an India tour is so I've never been a fan of warm-up games no interest whatsoever of warm-up games <laughs> it's like going to the driving range you hit four or five good balls and then you whack 95 balls that completely lose your shape and you, you come off feeling worse than you actually went into the uh, into the beer or into the, the, the practice game for so now, I've never been a one for, for the warm games, but I think you have a point. I'm not, I'm not so much about the it's their job, because their job is to play cricket for England. And their job is to beat India. The job is to play against India, not Tom Noddy's second eleven from you know that, that nobody's <laughs> interested in. Their job is and this is for me the, the, the best way to get the best out of them by making them relaxed, creating a very, very good environment. And, um, and, and that's why they're going to Abu Dhabi. And uh, like I said before, they'll, they'll come back just as fit, just as strong, just as focused. Um, and they, they'll have a build up, a little build up into, into when they get to Rajkot. One of the lines that Ben Stokes uses a lot um, and that really resonates with me is when he talks about players getting to the end of their international careers and thinking, I didn't make the best of that. I didn't give it my best shot. I, I was, I, too, I, you know, I wasn't relaxed, you know. I, and they, and to finish their international career with regrets. And so, so part of this whole preparation environment creating uh, business is is to make sure that that players are not only fearless in their game to make sure that they give it their best shot, but but happy and and relaxed and. It, it as I say, it takes a lot of adjusting to you know to, mentally to come to terms with that because it just hasn't been that way for a hundred years in <laughs> test cricket it hasn't and you, you think of the likes of Joe Root Johnny Bairstow J Jimmy Anderson definitely they've gone they've gone full circle you know they've gone from you know what is you know relaxed mentality now of they must be thinking why did we do all that why did that why didn't that happen like <laughs> 10 years ago so yeah, I think I would have loved to have played in, in this environment. I finished my career some, and sometimes going, I didn't enjoy that tour, I didn't enjoy that tour, I, I, I wasn't the best tourist. But 
you know, there was times where you go and I didn't in, enjoy that phase of my career. Um, ben and Brendan are making sure that this is the best time of your life. Whenever I've been asked a couple of times now to present a cap inside the uh, inside the huddle, Matt Potts's, and then obviously Ben's when he got to 50 uh, out in Barbados, keep reiterating that uh, in there, enjoy what you're doing because this is the best time of your life. Playing cricket for England is the best time of your life. And I think what Ben's trying to do, along with the coaching team, is to make sure the players understand that when going out in the middle, you know, as long as you do the, 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 the preparation work and as long as you follow the process of what you're trying to do from a, a, an individual and a team point of view, enjoy the fact that you're playing for England in front of 40,000 people in Vishkapatnam um, and really embrace the fun element of it. And I think that, for me, is the best thing about this group because that's what gets the best out of you. Final thought for you. Um so it occurs to me that there may come a time, maybe it's already here, maybe it's just around the corner, where young players will be thinking, oh, I could make £100,000, I could make £150,000 going and playing in this T20 league or that T20 league. But then when they hear what it's like playing test cricket for England, mm. they'll be like, you know what, I might earn less money, but that's actually what I want to do. I hope they would think that. I hope they would think playing for England in a test match is is the pinnacle of my career so why should why, why should it any, why should anything stand in the way so for me you know when you when you talk about playing for England and when you talk about the money that's on show and you talk about the environment that these lads are setting I would hope people would want to I would hope young individuals would want to come and play in that but it's team. not just the honour of playing test matches mm. for England it's not just that it's the experience and the, the fun, of, and the fun. Yeah, it's the experience of, it's the whole fun of the fair. It's a whole ride of getting on that roller coaster with McCollum and Stokes and setting off on a, on a, on a, on a five-day journey that could, yeah, could end anywhere. And, and that <laughs> is such a, a beautiful thing and such a great thing for, for any young player. But I think what I, what I hope comes out of the rest of this tour, you know, we, we, leave, we leave India, we do the next three games from, from back in London and... What I hope by the end of you know, Damshala, we, we get a result where the Indian, um, Indian cricket team, the Indian management staff, come away and go, that's how we want to play. Because I think if India go down the route of Ben Stokes and Brendan McCollum, then I think what you're talking about is a young player wanting to go and play in um, the franchise leagues for all that money. I think their mentality might change because mm. test match cricket might go to a level where it is, it's like a 2020 over five, over five days. And I think because of that, if then the ICC get involved and change and make it you know, the, the financially better for the young players to come and play around the world and play test match arenas, they create a window where test match cricket only can be played. I think we'll be on the start of something which gets test match cricket back to where everybody wants it to be, which is the pinnacle of playing cricket. Test matches for me is what you are remembered for. And I think if England can either win this series or win another test match out here and give India even more of a fright than they've given them already, in India go, you know what? We are one of the best shortest format teams in the world. We should be playing like this. So we'll start picking our team to play like this. Then I think test match cricket will basically have lift off. If you're listening to the following on podcast, uh, you, you would have missed this. But if you're watching it on uh, the uh, YouTube, on our um, TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel, then you would have seen um, the one and only Scott Taylor, our producer, whispering into my ear. Apparently, last night you did a function. Well, I know you did a function, but you met a couple of listeners to uh, the podcast? I did, yes. It was, it was, it was weird. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember what, what they said now. But <laughs> was, they were asking me if uh, if we had um, if we were taking that was the opening line. Do you taking malaria tablets? So I was like, what? what? And he was like, are you taking malaria tablets? And I was like, no. And then we talk, he was talking about precautions, and I explained my family situation, and I couldn't understand where he was going with this conversation. And then he said, we listened throughout this test match. He said on the app, we listened to it. Um, so there was four, um, four Indian guys in the um, British Indian guys in the restaurant last night where we were, and I said we give him a shout out. I can't remember for the life of me what his name was, but he was great fun, great chat, um, and he said keep up the good work because we were we were, you know, five ten seconds behind on the app, 
but we were listening to your commentary while watching the cricket in the stadium. So we're, we're, we're getting to parts of the world. We're, get, we're, we're getting <laughs> to people. People are warming to us. We are, we, we're, we're warming to us. So uh, the, the coverage has been great. I hope people have been enjoying it. And then, you know, we're going to have a little break. But we'll be back in London and we'll be back with, you know, back, the, the band will be back together for the third test match in Riyadh Cup. It's the following on podcast, episode number I can't remember. <laughs> done loads and we'll uh, be we're going home via london uh, via delhi uh, so we're our last uh, following on podca- podcast will come to you tomorrow from delhi cheers for now <laughs>